Hello and welcome to Access Paranormal. Now, it's a new year, Jonathan, it's and we're it back. Is. It feels like ages since we last done anything. It's been a year. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah, yeah. But tonight, we've got a cracking show tonight, because we've got Sean Kenny yeah. from Dark Ter Territory, not Territory, Ter yeah. I've started, and I don't even drink, and Christmas and New Year's yeah. over. <laughs> but Happy uh, New Year to everybody out there anyway. Yeah. Um, we've got yeah, Sean Kenny from Dark Territory, Yeah. and he's telling us his ghost story. I know. And um, what we've been doing is trying to get people to tell us their ghost stories. So if you've got any out there, get in touch with us with yours. But we're going to be playing Sean's in a minute, and it's a cracker, absolute cracker. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, um, it takes up most of the show, but it was a must. It's well, it's got it's got to be done. It's got so good. Hmm. And uh, we're going to be doing this uh, as much as we can now as well. Yeah, we are getting yeah. people in and doing their stories because that's what we want on the show as well. Yeah. Um. We missed out on the New Year's Eve because L35. Um, had a New Year's Eve extravaganza, so um, it's did, the first yeah. time we've missed a weekend. Bit of a party, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dirty, <Dizzy, laughs> disgusting stop out. I hope you're listening to this, Neil. But, um, yeah, we're back. Yes, we Festivities are. are all over. Yeah, back to normal. Certainly have an, um, New year, new start. I know, yeah, yeah. Aye. Uh, it was about three weeks, three, four weeks since we last recorded anything. It is, yeah. 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 I'm not giving away. Anything away. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you went away. I can't give you any stick anymore. Hello. Right? Oh, it so. makes a change, doesn't it? Uh, Ten Tenerife <laughs> didn't know what it is. <laughs> but um, yeah, we had a good time anyway. Brilliant. But um, it's nice to be back. It's nice back to um, getting onto the paranormal stuff and that. It and is. we will be getting out and about. The weather's been absolutely atrocious. It's been awful, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've not been able to get out anyway. I mean, I mean obviously, I know the Christmas, New Year's been here and gone. Um, I've been away on holiday and that, so yeah. we have not been able to get out and about. And, I, and in a way, it's been good because the weather has been just horrendous, know, absolutely yeah. horrendous. Yeah. So we, we've um, had a bit of a break. We certainly have, yeah. And um, we had some sad news as well. We did, we did. Um, yeah. A, a really good friend of ours who was in our group since 2010. Yeah. Uh, Liz War sadly passed away on us. Yeah, she did. And it's a bit of heartbreaking, but next week's show we've got a, an interview with her, haven't we? We're going yeah. to put it on as a in memory of Liz Warren. And anybody who knew her knew she was like the life of the party. Oh, she was. And the same with the paranormal investigations. Yeah, exactly. You know, if, it, if it was quiet, you'd always depend on Liz to oh, yeah. to be there to, to crack the jokes and everything else. Definitely. But more on Liz next week. And um, you know, it's it's with sad news that we have to bring you that, especially in our first show back as well yeah but um more on that next week um because we're going to dedicate a show to, um, to liz next week most of the show to liz next week yeah. anyway but uh, back to us we're Hello. going to be out we're going to be doing some investigations we're going yeah. to be doing some interviews we've got some great interviews coming up some cracker ones coming yeah, up yeah. So, even though yeah, yeah, yeah stay tuned yeah even though we've like been you know, saying we haven't been doing nothing, I've been organising well, interviews yeah, in and getting people in the background, going on. Yeah, getting people in. We've got, yeah. I think we've got four this in the next couple of weeks. I've got four interviews lined up yeah. for us to do. That's right. So they'll be coming to our um, channels. Yes. And we've got it. We, we might have a really good one as well, mightn't we? I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we went on a live with somebody tonight, didn't we? We just popped on, and I said, hey, "It's fancy doing an interview with anyone." Yeah, just contact me yeah. down below. Fantastic, we're not going to tell you who it is out. For a few months, haven't we? We have, yeah. So that'll be, um, mm. let's just say, an interesting one. It certainly will be. I think it'll be the most, well, controversial stroke interesting one we've ever done. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. Definitely. So that'll be, it'll be good. It will. It'll and be it'll be in, very, very interesting. Very to interesting, indeed, say, indeed, yeah. I think. Hopefully, I think. you won't name names. No, hopefully. Uh, I but, think if he will, do, but if he does. It's not nothing to do with it's us. To do with us. <laughs> We're just giving them the airwaves as an interview. Yeah. So we'll watch out yeah. for that one anyway. Definitely. But anyway, we've been talking for a couple of minutes now, and I think it's time that we start our one of the ghost stories. Yeah. And sorry, I'm just doing something at the same time as I'm talking to you, Jonathan. And it, it's called. It's actually called my most frightening paranormal experience, and it's Sean Kenny, Sean Kenner of Dark Territory. And he went to a location, and obviously this was the the biggest story of his time. 
Um, and I've got to say to Sean Owen as well, who added the audio to it, you know, the, the sound effects and that. It's, it's job, fantastic. It, eh? but you know what? Let's let Sean tell his story. Hey, it's Sean from Dark Territory. And tonight I'm going to share with you one of my most frightening paranormal experiences. So it's pretty safe to say I've had many frightening paranormal experiences. But when Jamie asked me to do this, he specifically said what made me feel the most uneasy. Straight away, my mind's gone back, I think about five years ago. I've been investigating the paranormal for about eight or nine years. And this was about three years in. You know, still fairly new to it, really. And I think it's fair to say it's those first years that are the most frightening. You just don't know what to expect. The more you do this, the more you kind of become a bit, not numb to it. It's still frightening, don't get me wrong, but back then it used to be so much worse. And yeah, I will never forget this one location that although from initial impressions may not seem the most scary of places, it really was. Starting at the beginning, this location came about because, like I say, I was about three years in. I was reaching that point where I was wanting to test just how bad can the paranormal be, you know, how strong can it be. Uh, I wanted full-on poltergeist activity, you know, give me all of it. I just wanted to experience it, see what the limits were, which is something that we've kind of proceeded to do with Dark Territory, but... And um, this was before that. Now, like I say, I wanted to see how bad it could get. So I reached out on a Facebook group and I asked from people's experiences, where's the worst place you've ever been? You know, I want to be scratched. I want to be thrown. I want the worst of it. Where would people suggest? And I was really surprised, right? How many people responded to this post with this same location. And the interesting thing was as well, I'd never heard of this location. So it wasn't one of the big popular ones, certainly not the likes of your um, you know, public events. I don't think they went to this place. I never saw it advertised. But anyway, this place was called The Cage in St. Oswith. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's Essex. Um, it's this little old, I'm assuming medieval village town because it had a castle right opposite the house. But yeah, to just try and picture the scene, you had a row of houses, like not particularly all that old, but then at the end of the row was this little medieval, I don't know if it was thatched, but that's how I remember it, like little thatched cottage with old beams and low ceilings and yeah, it just looked out of place, like... That was the only remnants of a very old time left in this village. Yeah, it was strange. But right next door to it was a pub. And it was a bustling, busy little village. So we arrived there. It was summertime, beautiful, sunny weather. It looked like a little holiday b and And that's how the team at the time perceived it. Um, back then, we had a psychic medium with us. I think it was myself... Owen from Dark Territory, if you know the show. Um, like I say, this medium and one other guy as well. So there's only four of us, but yeah, everyone seemed quite chill with the place. And it surprised me because you know, I'm not a psychic, but when I stepped foot into this house, maybe not immediately, but it didn't feel right to me. I always felt like I had my guard up about this place. Now, was that because... You know, I'd inquired about the location. I'd been told it was so bad. Done a little bit of research on it. Basically, prior to it being hired out for ghost hunts, a lady lived there with a baby and had all manner of things happen to her. You know, she reckoned something really evil lived in this house. Not just a ghost, something really bad. If I recall, the ultimate event that made her leave this house was one day she heard footsteps upstairs, her baby was upstairs... She looked up the stairs and saw someone, I believe a man, stood over the baby's cot staring at it. 
Can you imagine if you're a single mum, she was on her own in this house and sees that? I mean, I imagine there was a whole host of things prior to that, but who would stay in that house after seeing that? And just to clarify, it obviously didn't turn out to be an actual somebody. There's also reportedly, I mean, you can never know how true this is, myths and legends get built up onto haunted houses, but prior to her living there, previous tenants committed suicide in there. Is that because of paranormal causes? Having had my experiences there, I would say it seems very likely. But, yeah, I think it's time. There's your bit of backstory on this place. I think it's time to tell my story. I should probably first point out that we hired this place for three days because it was quite a good distance away from where most of us lived. We thought we'd make a long weekend out of it. We're unloading our equipment. This is the first thing that happens. And this actually happened on about three occasions. There's a busy road outside. And literally, people would stop, pull up on the curb, and warn us. Now, I kid you not. I'm not exaggerating. This literally happened about three times. People would say, oh my God, are you staying there the night? Good luck. Now... This place has clearly, locally, got a reputation for this to happen. We've been to so many locations and this has never happened, even, you know, still to this day. But besides that, like I say, it was beautiful weather and there's busy pub next door and it seemed quite a nice place. However, we'd noticed on one of the side tables a photo. Now, I've seen this before in haunted houses where they have like a collection of investigators evidence photos of shadows and stuff but this this was something else <laughs> this looked like how can i describe it 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 wasn't like a, a photograph that's like you know bad quality like zoomed in or anything it was like a proper i, I, I can't tell you how this was caught i have no idea where it's from or anything it literally looks like something from hell. Picture like the Grim Reaper, faceless. With it, it, it just emanated evil, but it just looked like something you, you could really imagine, you know, not something fantasy. It just looked real. I can't say anything else about it, but it was it looked real and absolutely terrifying. So that was left on the side table. Had somebody took this picture, we had no idea. But, again, that's another little thing in the back of the mind that is something like that meant to be in here. You know, you match that up with the stories from the woman who used to live there, something evil there. Yeah, that thing certainly looked evil. But I just realised, because I am just doing this completely unscripted from memory, there's a big part of this place that I've failed to mention. And that is why it's called The Cage. Because this place didn't used to be a house. It used to be a prison. It was a medieval prison. And it's famous for holding a witch. Or, a, you know, a condemned witch. She may not have been a witch. But she was held in this house before being executed. In a pit in the floor that still remained in this house. Now, that was a part of this first day as well, so this ties in nicely. We didn't know if this pit existed. We'd heard about the prison. In fact, I think there was a plaque outside the door that mentioned the witch's prison and a bit of history on it. But we didn't know if this holding cell, which was sunk in the ground, still existed. So it was pretty much just two rooms, the ground floor. It wasn't a big building. There was no sign of it. But there was a big rug with a big dining table over the top of it. Telling you this story, it sounds like scary movie, like you wouldn't pull the rug and have a look, would you, at Frankenstein buried underneath kind of thing. But that's what we did. And it was naughty because we obviously thought, well, we're perhaps not meant to look at this trap door hole thing if it exists because you wouldn't have all this on top of it if that were the case, right? And there was CCTV cameras in there. So we were a bit naughty and kind of covered up the camera 
while we moved all the table and chairs off and got the rug up and you know it there was a trap door in the floor an old wooden trap door in the old wooden floorboards and we were like oh my god do we open it you know what we actually didn't open it at that time we're too scared to we're like right we'll wait until night when the investigation unfolds and then we'll do it oh and i nearly forgot not only that it was actually screwed down with like huge screws (laughs) <laughs> this trap door was. So that just further enforced that we weren't meant to be messing with this. Oh dear. So, bearing in mind, we knew we had three days here. So that first night, we thought, okay, we're not going to open the trap door. So instead, we just did a pretty regular seance in the ground floor area, and nothing really happened. Um, I think the medium was getting kind of witchy vibes coming through, but nothing... Nothing bad or negative, we weren't hearing anything. Um, So we called it a night, and we all slept at the location upstairs. And yeah, it was a peaceful night, really. Nothing, Nothing to really comment on. I mean, it's never easy sleeping somewhere supposedly haunted, even if not much is going on. But yeah, day two rolls round. Now, we quickly found out that because there's a busy road outside and a busy pub next door and it was the weekend, during the day, it become pretty impossible to actually investigate and try and get any evidence. So, I think we spent a lot of the next day at the pub next door (laughs) and talking to locals and, yeah, like I said, there was definitely a local bad reputation about this place, but we just weren't really seeing it. Now... I obviously hadn't slept very good. Like I say, it's always hard sleeping somewhere meant to be haunted. So I was pretty flagging, and obviously we had a long night ahead of us filming. So I went back in the house to just try and get a couple hours sleep while the other guys were at the pub. And I just felt like eyes were on me straight away. Like every part of my being was saying, no, you cannot stay in this house, even though it had been fine could hear people around and whatnot. It just, I don't know, every instinct in my body told me to get out of there. So I did and slept in my car. And in hindsight, I'm so glad that I listened to my instinct and didn't stay in there on my own that day. Because this is when this house started to change. Night two comes round. Now... We started filming just myself and the medium. It gone night time. We were upstairs, uh, just calling out. Uh, I think we were perhaps inquiring about like the tenants that had maybe committed suicide there. I think we were trying to reach out to them. And we probably had, I don't know, a good two hours filming. Again, nothing evidence-wise caught, but we both agreed, myself and the medium, that it was starting to feel more oppressive. Definitely that comfortable B&B feeling was going, if not gone at that point, after those two hours. So, yeah, we got out of there. We wanted to tell the guys. We thought, look, something's starting to change in this place. Um, So we headed over to the pub where they were, but they weren't. They were actually outside the house with a young girl and her mum. And this is the point where this house started to get interesting. Is that the lady? Owen asked the young girl, pointing to our medium. No, she said. Our medium had black hair, and yet the lady she'd seen had light brown and looked younger. And Owen was just gobsmacked. I mean, at this point, like you, right now, We had no idea what was going on. It literally made no sense what was being spoken about. But we were about to be really freaked out by what this girl had to say. Because during that time that we'd been filming entirely upstairs, we literally did not go downstairs for that whole two hours. And I think it must have been a period of time when we were using the spirit box because we heard absolutely none of this. But apparently, while her parents' family were at the pub next door, where Owen and our other teammate was, she'd gone up to the window, 
knowing that this was a creepy haunted place and wanted to see if she could see anything. And it sounds crazy, right? But apparently, a lady jumped out at the window, obviously from the inside, jumped out the window to scare this girl. And she didn't really think anything of it. She didn't think it was a ghost. She just naturally assumed that it had been one of us just trying to give her a scare. And that's obviously when she must have told her parents, who then knew that Owen and our other guy were ghost hunting there, so they spoke to them, and this is what happened. This is what we walked out to when we'd finished filming and came outside. And when the girl realised, when she saw myself and the medium, and no one else was in the building, and we weren't this woman that she'd seen very clearly, like, very close to the glass... <laughs> Yeah, this girl then started to panic. I mean, when I say girl, she wasn't young. She was, like, maybe, like, 12 or 13. She was, you know, well aware of what was going on. I mean, Owen had already said to them that that doesn't sound like something our medium would do. You know, she was a very respectful lady. So, I mean, just to be sure, he was waiting for us to come out so he could confirm it wasn't her that the girl had seen, but... But yeah, once this girl saw, <laughs> she was like, Jesus Christ, I've just seen a ghost. And we had, like I say, we were in there. We had literally no idea this had happened. However, what did we say? The house was changing. It started to go oppressive in there. So this indicated to us that, Jesus Christ, something had manifested downstairs while we'd been calling out upstairs. And we just knew, right. We had to get back in that house. Stuff is happening right now and in a big way. But first, we just had to question. Oh, hang on a minute. We've been upstairs trying to communicate. Nothing's happened for us. And yet something, it seems, has actually physically manifested downstairs and intelligently reacted to somebody outside the building. Now, let's just think back to that photograph that I've spoken about. That dark, evil, demonic creature figure thing, right? Let's speculate, could these oppressive negative feelings that were starting to engulf the house have actually been that starting to manifest? And maybe this woman that had scared the girl away was actually a kind, good spirit. Could this have been the witch that was executed? You know, she may have been a good person. Just back then, they had a crazy obsession with killing witches, like, what was it, superstition back then? Who knows? But was this that witch that was executed, knowing that this evil entity was starting to come into our realm, was she trying to get the young girl away, the innocent young girl outside? You know, don't get near this house, you could... You could get attacked by this evil thing. This is what our medium was starting to speculate. So, yeah, it was starting to get exciting. And it was now time to get the whole team back in that house to see what the hell would happen next. The time, I think we're looking about 11, 11.30 at night. Pub's now starting to settle down. So it's, it's now ideal time to actually try and get some evidence from this location. And considering what had just happened, or at least what we'd been told had just happened, which did match our own feelings upstairs, we thought now, it was now or never. Now was the time to open Pandora's box. You know what I'm talking about? That trap door. Owen, pass me that electric screwdriver, and we got to work opening up this hatch. Oh my god, our medium said as we took out the last screw and began to slowly lift up the hatch. I have to admit, even I felt a sense of dread as the cold, musty air from this dark hole began to spread into our room. It literally felt like we were just letting evil into our domain. I turned round to see Owen stood in the corner of the room with his back to me, muttering an ancient language under his breath, snarling almost. Okay, let's backtrack just a little bit. I'm getting a bit carried away there. 
But no, seriously, I can't help but feel that I'm telling you like a fictional horror story right now because that's what this feels like. This situation was that bizarre. We've just unscrewed this ancient doorway to a place that used to be pure misery, very possibly the source of this dark energy in the house. What the hell were we doing? Okay, so back to the action. So Owen's not really in the corner, possessed by a demon. Instead, he stood next to me with a camera in one hand and a torch in the other. And I'm just about to open this hatch up. We each look at each other and I do it. I lift this hatch straight up. Owen shines the light in there. And it is pretty much what we expected. It is literally a dirt hole, the height of a person. What a way to be held. I mean, you know, we're going back to medieval times, so it was crawl back then. But someone would have literally been shut in the dark in a dirt hole under this building. And it's just stayed like that since medieval times. Like, that is crazy. So, we're all just staring into this hole. I think kind of just expecting a demon to come flying out and, like, knock us backwards or something. But no, nothing happened. So... We called out to the witch. We think she's just been seen in this very room by the girl outside. So, And this is the hole that she was imprisoned in before being executed. So surely, if she's the one that haunts this place, or one of the spirits that haunt this place, this space in the ground is going to be very connected to her. But still, nothing happened. So the next thing we thought, right, who's getting down in the hole? Let's see if that triggers any energy or emotion. And naturally, being as I was lead investigator, it was decided that I should be the one to go down in the hole. So I did. And again, nothing happened. I can't say I can recall feeling anything untoward or anything, really. It's just a dirt hole in the ground. So we even then tried a spirit box session in the hole with the hatch put back down on top. So it was in the dark. And still... Nothing happened, nothing come through the spirit box. So we started to scratch our heads a bit. I don't believe the medium was picking up anything either, so this was really strange, you know. A full-blown apparition has just been seen in this room and was intelligent, and yet we're now in here almost provoking it, really, with opening this hole up and getting inside of it, and nothing's happening. But this is how the paranormal can go. It can literally come and go in... Waves, that's how we've always described it. You can be calling out, investigating for two hours, and then you'll have 30 seconds where you get something really amazing happen, and then you can have another two hours of nothing. So it could just be that that energy burst has been used up. And just take note, I've just said about energy there. As we get into day three, and it's day three that made this investigation my most uneasy investigation... I believe energy is the sole reason why it went down the way it did that night. But before I go into day three, just to wrap up where the story's at right now, we carried on investigating in and around the hole, around the house with the hatch left open, and yeah, nothing happened. (laughs) I feel like I've said that a lot of times in the last five minutes. So it comes to the point where we run out of ideas and it was time to go to bed. And it was another peaceful night. So, yeah, so far, I imagine you're thinking, yeah, this place doesn't seem that bad. I mean, it's quite cool about the girl saw the ghost, but so far, you've had no evidence. You haven't caught anything. And that's what we were thinking. We were like, we've hired this place for three days. It's meant to be super bad. We're thinking we'd have loads of cool captures by now, and we had pretty much nothing other than the testimony of a girl. So it was the last day. Day three, we were like, (laughs) is this house haunted or not? Now is its time to show us. And my God, did it show us. Okay, so the next morning, I remember waking up to the sunlight beaming through the curtains. I mean, all three days down here were beautiful. Uh, Warm, hot summer days, but... This was only 9am and it was already hot in the house, so today it was going to be a warm day. So we decided for the morning, let's get out of the house, get some breakfast, 
we knew there was a nice beach nearby, so we thought we'll go spend the morning there. And then we'll come back to the house, refreshed, ready to really give it one last push to try and get some evidence out of it. So I'm just coming down the stairs, I've just got dressed, and I hear an almighty smack, followed very quickly by a man screaming. And it was the other guy in our team. So I quickly run towards him, which was the room where the girl had seen the woman, which is also the room where the trap door was. And in that room, there's the old original door, which they would have used to bring the prisoners in and out of. And as you'd imagine, back then, I don't know if people were just smaller back then, but ceiling heights were lower, doors were smaller. And yeah, this door was pretty small with a, a low wooden beam across the top of it. So he'd gone out through this door for some reason and absolutely bashed his head off this beam, which literally knocked him to the ground and he had blood dripping from his forehead. Now, I'm not telling you this because I'm implying this was the house getting its revenge on us for like opening the trap door or or just generally for being here and being a nuisance to the ghosts. But it did seem a bit uncanny that one of us had drew blood in the same room, literally metres, probably two metres away from the trap door and where this female apparition had been seen. But anyway, he got plastered up, we went to the beach, he had an ice cream, it was all good. And so the four of us spent the remainder of the morning planning what we could do for this last night what could possibly get the most reaction out of this house? We'd already tried opening the door and getting in it, and nothing had happened, so what more can we do? And I think it was the medium that suggested that we take a step back a bit and go a little bit more traditional with our approach, and that was to just use a Ouija board, but on top of this holding cell hole. We'll put the dining table back where it was, and we'll all do a seance, try and connect with the energy that's supposedly in this room, and then try and communicate with the Ouija board. Now, myself and Owen, we'd always been sceptical of Ouija boards and therefore preferred more modern equipment, such as, you know, the spirit box, EVP recorders and so on. But we would tried that and had no results, so we were certainly willing to give this a go. Remember, I said how hot these three days have been, especially this morning when we woke up. Well, it turns out a huge thunderstorm was on its way to us for that evening. I think it was set to arrive for about 8 o'clock and be pretty much on for the whole night. Now, we had never done an investigation during a thunderstorm before, so we were pretty damn excited about this because whenever you think of a scary haunted house in a horror film, It's generally got a thunderstorm cracking off at some point. So the time's now 7pm. The storm's meant to be arriving within the hour. So we're busy setting the scene for the vigil that we're about to begin. So as I mentioned, we put the room back how it was. We put the rug back over the trapdoor, the dining table and chairs back on top of that. And we lit candles round the room just to help set the mood. And with the scene now set... We each took our places at a chair round the table. Owen was sat next to me with the medium and our other teammate on the other side. Almost on cue, as we were about to begin using the Ouija board, our dim, candlelit room flashes bright white as the storm arrives and lightning strikes nearby. Shortly afterwards, rain started to patter at the windows and this was it. This was the most ideal, creepy setting to be using a Ouija board in. It now begins. The medium first invites spirits to come and join us around the table, and we each begin to move the planchette slowly around just to start building energy and motion on the board. However, we did not need to do this for long, as within a space of 10 seconds, the Ouija board had a plan of its own and it was unlike anything me and Owen especially had ever seen before and the best way I can possibly describe this to you is to imagine a swinging pendulum you're holding a rope 
with some kind of weight on the end and swinging it from side to side. That is the motion that the planchette began to move in. I can't remember if it was from right to left. I feel like there is a significance apparently in this, but whichever way it was doing it was apparently bad. It was the dark way. I think it was in the reverse of what it's meant to be, which is meant to be something nasty. And the fact it was swinging like a pendulum, we were then asking questions, but it made no difference. It still carried on with this very strong motion. Weird. I'd never seen anything like this before. I could feel the force of this thing swinging on the board. I think me and Owen just looked at each other and didn't know what to make of it. And then obviously looking at the medium to see if she knew what the hell was going on. So I think we probably let it do this for about 30 seconds before the medium put a stop to it. She told us all to come off the planchette and told us, guys, this is bad. This is something dark doing this. It shouldn't be doing this. As she's saying this, our dark room flashes once again as the storm is still rolling overhead. I think it's fair to say we were all starting to get a little bit freaked out right now. But we were here for one thing, and that was to try and get solid evidence. So we start again. The medium requests that we only want to deal with light spirits. Now, knowing me back then in my naivety, I probably said, no, no, we want all the spirits here. The bad, the good, the ugly, we want everyone. Whoever's going to put on the best show. So, once again, we begin to start moving the planchette around the board to get the motion going, and it almost immediately reverts back to the swinging pendulum and continues to do so. Of course, while this is happening, we're calling out, asking, is this the witch? You know, are you doing this because you were killed here? Was your execution unfair? I mean, that's pretty obvious. It's an execution, but, you know, was she not a witch? Was it wrong conviction? Um, is this the reason there's dark energy here? We're asking all these kind of questions. And the medium starts to get a really panicked look on her face. And once again, she stops the motion of the board and tells us all to come off. And asked one of us to shine some light on the wall to the side of us. Why? What, what's up with the wall? Did you see something there? I asked. I did. But you're not going to like what I saw. I think I've been seeing it for a while. But it's only been getting stronger and stronger the longer this swinging motion's been happening. I'm seeing blood running down this wall from top to bottom all the way along. It's covered and I can't help but get the strong sense that it's our blood. I really don't think we should carry on doing this. Whatever's here does not want us here and this is definitely our warning. So, we each look at each other and discuss what to do next. Do we continue? Is the medium right? Are we dealing with something evil here, as is rumoured to be here? Or do we continue in the hope that this thing is going to deliver us the kind of evidence that we've always been looking for? Against the medium's advice, we decide to continue. But before we do, the medium asked both me and Owen, during all that time, did either of you not feel anything between you? Like, we were sat next to each other. Did you feel anything against your leg or the side of your arms? And we both looked at each other and both said no. And so she told us that, as well as the blood, she'd been getting the sense of a big dog sat between the two of us. But not just a dog like you'd expect, like a big dog, like a hound. We're talking biggest dog breed you can think of, and it's black. Almost like, a, you know, a guard dog. It's guarding something. And me and Owen were sat on top of the hole in the ground where the trap door was. Almost like this thing was sat on the trap door. Now, although neither of us had felt anything like from this dog, I did have to admit... It felt very strange sat over this trapdoor. It almost felt like the chair that I was sat on was suspended up very high, like this trapdoor hole in the ground went down for miles and the chair was the only thing stopping me from falling. That's how it felt. And when I described this to Owen, he felt the exact same way. It was almost like this hole was now a portal to hell and this hole in the ground had opened up. And you could feel that distance. That's, how, that's the best way I could possibly describe it. Now, that is probably our imaginations, but 
for both of us to feel that sense of almost height and depth beneath us when the rug was back over and the trap door was screwed down shut again it's a bit strange now couple that up with the medium seeing a huge black hound sat over it it does make you wonder was this a portal to hell now i know this sounds crazy but it's the next thing that happens which is really the main event that makes this the most scary, uneasy investigation. Okay, so here it is. This is the big moment. So back to the scene. As I've already mentioned, we decided we were going to carry on against the medium's advice. The cameras are off, we're discussing what we should exactly do. Do we carry on with the Ouija board? Do we move to another room? And it's while we're talking, we are interrupted by quite easily the most horrific thing I've ever heard during a paranormal investigation. Now that is a clip of a bull making its roaring sound, but that is exactly what we heard and i kid you not it was in the room right next to us in the kitchen area now i need to stress the kitchen area is where the girl saw the woman on the inside that was the window she looked in from and from that same spot almost it was as if a bull had popped its head in the room and done that roaring sound it was it was that loud it bellowed into the room you can imagine we nearly fell off the chairs and we're like, what the actual f Now, even me, who was the one wanting to, you know, let's go for the dark stuff as well, let's get the evidence. I was scared. I felt we have crossed the line here big time. There clearly is something genuinely evil here and we've just pushed it. I was just terrified. Like, oh, is there going to be consequences from this? Are we going to have, like demonic attachments now from messing with this i just wanted to pack up i'd said guys look i think we need to get the hell out of this house bearing in mind it was probably like gone midnight there's a massive storm rolling around outside i mean where could we go we had so much equipment in the house that we needed to get to the cars and it was thrown down by rain i think for me it just helped perhaps affirm all the things that the medium had been saying, you know, with the blood down the walls and the hound guarding the doorway to hell and all that. Then hearing a bull sound, which is an animal associated with, like, you know, demons, the hooves, and, you know, it just made it all very real. Jesus Christ, I, I, that's what I felt I needed. I'd never been a religious person in my life. I'm still not to this day, but that night... I know, hypocritical. That night, after that, I was like, shit. If the dark side really exists, demons, the devil maybe, then does that mean that by default, angels and Jesus and God and all that exists as well? In that moment, I think I was just willing to grab hold of that reality and believe that. I mean, I used to wear a cross necklace for fashion because a lot of ghost hunters do. That night, I held on to that. We had to stay in the house. We all just went up to our room, locked ourselves in, barricaded the door <laughs> and tried to sleep for the night. But I just remember that night holding onto this cross around my neck. I don't think I let go of it. And as you might expect, I think probably safe to say all four of us slept with one eye open that night, but we did make it to the next morning without anything else happening. I mean, I can't believe that. I thought we'd, we'd go to bed trying to hide in that room upstairs and all hell would break loose on us, but, but no. It seemed like everything was isolated to that room that had the hole in. So, it makes you wonder, right? This witch was held in this hole before her execution. It's kind of what this place is famous for is it possible that she really was a witch and we're assuming i guess that like magic and black magic was a it was a thing did she conjure something in that hole in her time of being held there
as a way of perhaps trying to attack her captors or just, I guess, harm harm her captors afterwards. Yeah, I don't know. And that's just stayed there ever since. And maybe us going in and opening that hole up combined with, I mentioned this earlier, the thunderstorm overhead, could that have been a natural huge energy source for paranormal entities to feed off? That's what I was speculating. The next day, I'm thinking that was just a huge wave, a surge of energy for these entities to come forward strong. Like, that ball sound we heard was as loud and clear as a real ball literally in the room with us. Insane. And don't forget, I feel I just need to make this abundantly clear. We were in the middle of a town here. There were no fields, no cattle anywhere nearby so there was literally no explanation whatsoever for this ball noise i mean we straight away tried to rationally explain it as like a motorbike going past or something but we knew it wasn't it was a sudden start and finish there was no fade in fade out yeah there's just no way we, we couldn't explain it and even more frustratingly as i mentioned this happened at a time when we turned the cameras off because we were, like, behind the scenes talking about how the hell we were going to proceed. So still, it's been three days, even though we've had this crazy evening, there's still been no evidence captures of this place whatsoever. So we never ended up even publishing this as a video. But in terms of a personal experience for the four of us, you know, this place really did leave its mark, even all these years later. It's still as vivid as it was as if I'd done it a few months ago. So I think it's also important that I mention on my way home after we'd, the next morning, we'd packed up, got out of the house, I felt compelled to stop at my local church. Now, I'd actually never been inside it. I just drove past for years. But I was scared to return to my house with the fear of something from that place could still be with me and attached to me in some way. Now, just so you can picture this, I live quite rurally in the countryside. So this is a very small, quaint village where I live. And it's a very old church, actually. I think it does go to, like, medieval times. And I'll never forget, it's still early morning because we set off super early. We wanted to get out of that place. So by the time I got home, it was still quite early. I remember entering through the doors of this old church chapel and... The feeling I got there, I mean, I'm sure anybody who's religious listening to this will relate and understand this, but as I walked through towards the altar, looking at the stained glass windows in front of me, there was a very overwhelming sense of power, but in a very positive way. Yeah, I felt almost empowered, and the fear of whatever the hell I'd just been dealing with kind of disappeared. Almost like walking through these doors had cleansed it off me, I'd left it back at the door. That's how it felt. But not only that, having been inside a lot of haunted places and kind of attuned my senses to the feeling of being around something of a paranormal nature, that just, that sixth sense, you can just feel there's something around you. I had that at the same time in this church. So I'm almost saying like this church felt haunted, which sounds a bit crazy. I mean, does it? I mean, there could be spirits there, right? But yeah, it felt haunted, but in a very positive, powerful way. And I mean, saying this, I'm sure people will be thinking, well, wow, if you had some kind of realization and you're now very religious, I'd like to say yes, but no. Um, It didn't put me on that path, even though I did experience this. I'm just... I'm the kind of person that I don't go towards religion. I'm very much in my own lane. But I respect other people's views. And I can totally see from this experience if anybody else has had a similar experience visiting a place of God or religion, I can see why you'd think, wow, there's something to this because I did experience that. But for me, that almost just feels part of my whole paranormal journey because it was a similar kind of feeling only in a more positive than negative way than hauntings normally are if that makes any sense but yeah i just wanted to add this little 
insight onto the end of the story because I feel like it just enforces how this place left its mark. You know, the, these personal experiences that we had there were that strong that it drove me, somebody completely not religious, to go to this church afterwards. So, yeah, there it is. That is our experience of the cage. And I believe it's actually been sold a number of years ago because years later, as we'd got even more experience under our belt and got braver and we started Dark Territory as it is today with myself, Owen and Carl from Dark Arts TV, it's the kind of place that we now go to. And I would have liked to have gone back, the three of us, but I don't believe you can anymore because somebody purchased it to live there. So... Good luck to them, that's all I shall say. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this story. It's gone on a lot longer than I expected it to, but I feel to give the place justice, I kind of needed to give you all the details and kind of take you on that journey with me. I'm used to showing you a visual journey, whereas this is a new for me to just describe it audibly, but I hope I've kind of put you in my shoes and being able to kind of visualise what we went through. But yeah, the cage, it certainly left its mark on us. I still to this day believe there was something very dark there. It was, it was a crazy experience that we'll never forget. So, it's now back to you, Jamie, and the team. Uh, I look forward to hearing your views on our experiences here. Thank you all so much for listening. Like I say, it's been a bit longer than I've hoped for, but I hope you've enjoyed the experience. Until next time, stay safe. So, that was Sean McKenna. Sean McKenna. Did I say McKenna? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I haven't changed, have I? No, no. no. <laughs> Not changed. So, yeah, that was Sean McKenna of Dark Territory, and he was telling us his most frightening paranormal experience. And as he said on there, from a place called The Cage. Yeah, down in Essex. Down in Essex. But the thing is, you can't use it anymore. You can't go there. Because as soon as I started... Know having a little bit of a research of where it was and things you like that it's been sold yeah yeah because I was thinking to myself Sean thank you hello yeah and then um, <laughs> that's a look. shame yeah. isn't it do you know what though it doesn't matter Sean's yeah. given us the insight of the building oh yeah and I mean, that, that was, that's good enough isn't it oh god yeah and credit to him when I was talking to him you know I was messaging him I said yeah. how are you getting on with it now Sean he was oh Jamie I'm still doing it I'm still doing it I said no panic no panic at all <laughs> you know and it, there wasn't, uh, and because I had trust, full trust in him. Oh yeah. And uh, he said it's gone from ten minutes, Jamie, to like twenty minutes. I said that's okay, that's great. I said we've got you do what you want and that. And then he come back and he went, I've done half an hour, but I haven't finished yet. I went okay, no worries, Sean, that, that's great and that. And then he come back and he said, Jamie, it's forty odd minutes long. And I went, that's perfect, that's fine. That's that. And fine, then he come back, he it? said, I've finished it, and he said I've sent it over to Sean Owen, Dark Territory. Yeah. And he's added the sound effects to it and, sounds, and, and done yeah. the stuff and that. Brilliant. Phenomenal. Brilliant. Do you know what? To start off with people's ghost stories, yeah, that is That's pure a, class. And one, isn't it? Sean, Sean was saying he's never done anything like this before. Yeah, you wouldn't so, know that, would you? No, no. But do you know really what, what a true honour it is to know that Sean Kenner has done that yeah. for our show. I know. And he, he's a busy man as well, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and Sean Owen. Yeah, they? yeah, fantastic. Oh, lovely. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. And anybody wants to go and, and see what Dark Territory do, get onto their pod, on, not podcast, get onto, onto the their YouTube, yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah, really good. Um, they're really good. There's some good stuff up there as well. Yeah. In fact, I'm not saying some good stuff, it's all good stuff. Very professional, superbly done. Yeah. And, and Sean Owen, what a cameraman. I know, yeah. Uh, what a camera! Professional, I think. Right through. If you watch them, if you go over to the channel and watch them, it's like watching a proper TV show. Yeah, it says the way it's it all is. been edited and everything else. Yeah. So you got Sean, Carl, and Sean, yeah. two Shans and a Carl. Yeah. And you go over and watch them. Something. Yeah, and again, Sean Kenner, thank you so much for doing that for us. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah. if anybody else has got any stories that they wish to record and send to us please feel free to do so or contact us on info dot access paranormal at gmail dot com or or get onto our Facebook page yeah access paranormal radio or podcast or Instagram and get us on Instagram access mm -hmm. paranormal podcast yeah we'd love to hear from you we'd love to hear your stories we've got a few little short stories 
we're, that have yeah. been sent to us as well. So yeah. we're going to be putting them on throughout the time as well. And also, Common Mystics. Yes. Um, first of all, apologies to Common Mystics because we have put one of your shows on yet um, due to the fact that we, we missed a week. Yeah, we did. Um, because of the New Year celebrations on L35. So we, we missed that. Yeah. Um, but that will be on next week's show as well um, because we're, we're, that's the one with the um, in memory of Liz War. Yeah. And also the Common Mystics... Um, Story will be on that one as well, yeah. and then we've got another one from them as well. They've sent us uh, another uh, one, so that'll be coming on at the end of the month, and then we're back on track. Yeah, we are. That's well, it for us. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all it's, it's all good. It's mm. all good. So don't forget send send your stories in. Um, any experiences that you've had, mm. get in touch. Let us know, and we'll get you on the show. One hundred percent. Yeah, um, and if you can record your stories. And send them Even to better, us. Yeah. We'll yeah. do the rest. Yeah. Um, if you want to type your stories up and send them in by email as a, as a typed story. Yeah, yeah, we'll read them out quite happily. Either we'll read them out or we'll get someone to read them out. Yeah. And I think we'll do what Sean done on his and we'll add them little sound effects know, and things like that. Yeah, I know. Sean, you've put the bar too high for know, us. Yeah. We've now got to look professional. I and, know. Well, we'll, we'll send them to the other Sean. Send them to Sean. <laughs> Owen. Put the audio on that back. I'll Are be getting, kidding? I'll be getting a phone call <laughs> off Sean Owen in a minute going, what do you think you're doing? Can't put them under pressure. Oh, yeah. No, I'm only messing. Where's that WhatsApp yeah. message? <laughs> yeah. and Sean Owen will be sitting in his house now panicking. Hello, yeah. <laughs> yeah, only kidding. Well, only we can kidding. blame Sean Kenny because he was the one who sent him to Sean in the first place, so we're all right. Well, that's yeah. he's, he's set that bar now, hasn't he? Yeah, too high, too high yeah, for us. Too high. They're Way professionals, we've got no chance now, have we? Ah, but I like we better, you know. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I have been doing over the, the Christmas period. I've been watching a lot of podcasts, you uh, know, on, on YouTube, okay, a lot yeah. of stuff on there. Yeah. And some of the stuff has been really interesting. I mean, I've been watching um, Nuke 5. Right, okay. Yeah, I've been watching the stuff, because I, I hadn't been watching much of his recently, because we've been a bit busy in that. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to catch up on a few things, so I put on Nuke 5. Some right. of the stuff on this, fantastic now. Good, yeah. Well, it's always good, but yeah. I think it was my brother watching. I said, "Have you been watching it? Did you watch Nuke Five? Oh, right, okay. Not I've not watched it for a while. Yeah, I know. Me, ne- me brother, I'm saying, my son, ah, Mark. Oh, Mark. Yeah. Mark actually ah, watches right, Nuke okay. Five, yeah. And the other person who, who well, we're bringing him back on again is um, Jim. Oh, Jim Sandoval. Sandoval, yeah. Yeah, he's coming back on, isn't he? Yeah, my son Mark thinks he was great. Yeah. And I so think your Mark's going to get involved in that, will it? I think so. I think he's going to come up and um, talk yeah, to yeah. him as well, because Mark good. found him really impressive. Because yeah. Mark listens to that. Now, Mark's not into the paranormal or anything like no. that. He loves the... When we took him to places and it's got a bit of history in it, and he loves the history he of things. He likes all that, doesn't he? Yeah, and, and he did at one stage... Um, Give us a surprise on, on the cave, didn't he? Yeah, so. it's, it, he's very knowledgeable in stuff like that, though, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. But, um, yeah, he, he thought Jim Sandrazel was really good. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, so he, he will be back soon. He certainly will. Um, we've got two females from America coming up to be interviewed as well, you know. Yeah, we have, yeah. yeah. There's going to be some different about. things this year as well, I think, Jamie. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say what they are, but it's going to be a few different things going on this year. Yeah, I'll have a new co-host. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a new presenter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we're coming towards the end of the show already. Really? We certainly are, yeah. Wow. But yeah, um, again, thank you so much to Sean Kenner from Dark Territory. Yeah. And for Sean his Owen. story and Sean Owen for doing yeah. the editing there the recordings yeah. between the two of them they've done a phenomenal bit of work there and uh, yeah listen out for next week's show um, dedicated to Liz War and we've got to say we're all going to miss you Liz yeah. and on that note we're going to be leaving you now and we'll be back again next week so we'll see you then so good night from Access Paranormal good night